I'm going to show you how to create the basic measures of central tendency using Microsoft Excel. And for this example, I'm going to be using the Center and Spread Week 5 Excel spreadsheet that I created for you. This spreadsheet is available both in our class and through a link in the description for this video. Let's take a look at our data and I'll show you how we're going to create those basic measures. Tab 1 is the Dog Toys data set. If you've followed any of the videos in this series, you're already familiar with this data set. The only thing that matters for us right now is we're going to be using this days to fail scale level variable, and we're going to be creating our measures of central tendency and variability. So go to the tab that says CT and VAR. Here's that days to fail vi uh, variable, which I just put into this tab to simplify it so that we don't have to refer back to the previous tab. If you want to see what this is all going to look like at the end, you can click on the second tab. There's all of the answers. Let's go back to our first tab. You'll notice that I have central tendency, variability, percentiles. I'm actually going to be using this same sheet multiple times. So you may want to watch through this series of videos to see how all of the pieces come together. But right now I'm going to be focusing just on the measures of central tendency. This also gives me an opportunity to show you some new techniques uh, or ways of handling data in Excel. So I'm going to start in this box. It is G3. That's where I'm going to put the mean for this days to fail variable. Right, the mean is going to go right here, and you will see the formulas appearing in this box over here as soon as I type them or after I hit return from typing them in this box right here. Well, let's get started. The mean formula is not mean, but rather average. So I start with an equal sign and then the word average. I'm typing it in lowercase, but you'll notice that Excel is going to change this to uppercase when I uh, hit return. Uh, now I'm going to do a shift and nine, which is an open parentheses. I need to say uh, what values do I want Excel to average. Let me show you one way of doing this. I could click on the first value, which is in B2, and drag that down to B51. You'll notice that Excel sort of slows down as I get close to the end of the line of data. Uh, let go and click a close parentheses, return, and there is my average, my mean, nine days to failure. To create the median, I'm going to show you a different technique, however. So let's start with our formula. It's going to be equal sign, median, open parentheses. And instead of typing the B2 to B51, I'm going to do this. B colon B. That is the range of numbers in column B. It will not use the days to fail name. It's simply going to use anything that is a number. If there's a number in this column, it's going to get averaged. So I'll click return, and there you go. The median is 8.5. But here's another way that I could do a measure of central tendency, or really any formula. Uh, I'm going to create the mode, the most or the, the middle score, the mode. Uh, start with equal sign. And there's a few options here. We're going to use mode. And because there could be multiple modes, I'm going to choose mode single or SNGL. This will give me a single number, the, the lowest value, uh, if there are multiple modes. There's my open parentheses. And now I'm just going to click on the B. There we go. It fills in B colon B. And I'm not even going to put the close parentheses. I'm just going to click return, and it still works. That closing parentheses is added for me. So those are three ways to select data, but it also shows, that this shows us the three measures of central tendency, the mean, the median, and the mode. So your mean is your mathematical center, the median is the geographic center, and the mode is the most frequently occurring score, which also will tend to be in the middle. I've told you about uh, data sets where uh, we can look for normality. And if the mean, median, and the mode are the same, or very similar, uh, then we know that the data set is most likely normal, 
or normally distributed. Now here we see a little bit of a slide. We have uh, 9, 8.5, 8. If we were to plot these data points from days to fail, we might see a little bit of skewness occurring where the data are being pulled out uh, on the low end. We'll have to check that out later. So that's how we create our basic measures of central tendency using Excel. Now I'm going to show you three other measures of the mean that we can also create using this same data set in Microsoft Excel.